First step, let's fill our fry daddy up with vegetable oil and preheat it to about 400 degrees. Next, we have our chicken wings over here. They've already been washed and uh, prepped and cleaned. This is the tray we're gonna be using to put them in the season. And this is the Tupperware container we'll put our flour in in order to coat the chicken wings. So we're getting our tray uh, together over here with some aluminum foil. And this is what we're gonna put the chicken wings on after they come out the grease. What I like to do is take some foil and kind of crinkle it up a bit. And what it creates are like hills and valleys in the foil. And when you sit the chicken on there, your oil or your grease will go down into the valleys and get off your meat. So next we're gonna take our chicken wings and put them in this aluminum tray. And uh, the way we're gonna season our chicken wings is that we're gonna season them in this tray. And then we're also gonna season the flour and give them a shake inside the flour so we're trying to create layers of flavor so let's go ahead and get these chicken wings lined in our tray here uh, we want to try to get them evenly spread out so that when we put our season in there to get them all seasoned everything gets coated up we're going to use some kitchen shears to uh, just cut off any excess skin and, and get these chicken wings ready to go so it's time now for us to come in and season our chicken and uh, I mentioned before, what we want to do is create layers of flavor. So our first layer is going to be just seasoning the chicken itself. And then the second layer is going to be seasoning the flour. And we're going to give the chicken a shake in the flour. So we're trying to create those layers of seasoning. So let's take some Lowry seasoned salt. We're going to just give this a shake. This is gonna be our only uh, source of salt as well. So uh, just be mindful for the, of the amount you're putting on this. Um, don't wanna overdo it, but just wanna make sure that you uh, give it a good coating over all the pieces. Next up, let's hit it with some black pepper. Again, not really an exact science when you season. Uh, after doing this a while, you should be able to get a feel for it. Just don't overthink it. Let's come in with some uh, garlic powder, coat all the pieces, and then we're gonna come in with some onion powder. So we're gonna give everything a nice coat, and then we'll come in here in a bit and get it all mixed. So here we are here just mixing it all up since we seasoned the top coat of the meat. So just uh, get everything incorporated, get all these pieces seasoned. Now it's time for us to season our flour. We're gonna fill our uh, Tupperware container about a third of the way with all-purpose flour. And then we're gonna add our different seasonings and uh, get everything combined. Let's start off with some uh, onion powder. Just gonna add this. Um, what I like to do when I add my seasonings to the flour is just cover the top coat of the flour. And then after doing that, give it a nice stir just to get uh, get that incorporated. And that's what we're doing here. So let's cover the top surface with our garlic powder. As you see right here, and once we cover that top surface, we can then come in with our spoon and just give it a nice stir. salty and if you're in doubt too uh, one, one thing I remember seeing my grandma do back in the day is that she would get a pinch of the flour season uh, combination and put it on the tip of her tongue to make sure that the seasoning was just right so 
So that's something you can do if you're in doubt about how much seasoning to use. In our case, we're gonna add a little bit more. I can tell by the color of the flour that uh, we need to add a little bit more seasoning because we're going for that light tint of orange from the seasoned salt and we're not quite there yet. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more seasoned salt to our flour. So now we've got all our seasonings uh, in our bowl. Let's go ahead and give this a nice shake just to make sure we have everything incorporated real good. And make sure that top is on. <laughs> and you start doing this and uh, I'm sure some of y'all uh, had that top pop off on you and get flour everywhere. So don't let that happen to you. Make sure that top is on there. So now let's go ahead and add our chicken uh, to the flour. Uh, you don't want to overcrowd this. So just make sure you add just enough to where there's a nice little spacing between all of them. Don't get it too crowded. If you get it too crowded, then that flour is not going to cover up your chicken. So just enough to make sure there's a good spacing in there. And I think, I think that looks pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and put our top back on. Again, make sure it's secure. And give it some good shakes here. We're trying to get all that flour to coat all those chicken uh, wings evenly. Give it a real good shake. Turn it upside down if you need to. Get our fry daddy. Our fry daddy is on the temperature. The light was off and it just came back on, so we're good. Now let's go ahead and add our chicken. Um, so our chicken was already floured. And before you just put it in there, tap off any excess flour. This is gonna help you. If you don't, this flour will get in there and start to accumulate on the bottom of your uh, fry daddy, and it's gonna mess up your temperature and start to burn on you. It can mess up your chicken. So let's go ahead and tap it, place it in. Give it a good tap again, place it in. Place it in nice and slow. You don't want to just drop it in. You drop it in too fast and the flour will just disperse on you. Go nice and slow to get a good seal on that chicken. And you don't want a crowded uh, fryer too. You don't want to put too much chicken in there because that temperature will go down on you and then your chicken, that flour isn't going to be crispy on you because the temperature is too low. So right now, as I put chicken in here, I'm just watching my grease. Is the grease slowing down? Is it still bubbling good? So it's still bubbling and we've got space. So I'm gonna add some more chicken to it. That's a good one. Still bubbling good, yep. Come over here. Chicken is still frying. I think it's coming along nicely. I can see that the tops are starting to brown a little bit. And I like the fact that our grease is still bubbling at a good pace. Let me know that the grease is still maintaining temperature. So I think we're looking good. We'll be right back in a little bit. So I can hear the oil starting to slow down on our chicken. So that's a good sign telling us it's almost uh, coming to that point where we can take it out. But before we do that, I'm just gonna move it around a little bit. See our pieces are starting to float. Again, that means we're almost there as far as I'm being done. So I'm just moving them around, making sure we don't have anything that may be stuck or make sure all of them cook equally. So, yep, they look good. We're gonna let these go a little while longer and we'll be right back. So our grease has slowed down. Our chicken's got a good color to it. Um, it's all floating, so I think we're done right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull, pull a piece out. Set it right there. Nice color to it. I'm gonna get my thermometer. Just double check my chicken. For chicken, I'm looking for 165. I don't wanna hit the bone, hit that side part. Let me see, we're good. 
one on it. Good. So chicken's good. Let's go ahead and pull out the rest of these pieces. So give them a nice tap over here. Get some of this uh, oil, excess oil off. Give it a nice tap. Fry this chicken. It's taking me back to my childhood. Remember how grandma used to be in uh in the kitchen with that cast iron skillet? Wasn't, wasn't using no fry daddies though back then. She was using that cast iron skillet and making that thing work. So that's where it all started for me. Back in grandma's house, frying up some chicken. Alright, let's go get our next batch done and we'll be right back. So we've got my chicken. This is the first batch that we've already done. We've got our bottom oven here preheated to 175. So let's go ahead and put this in here to keep warm. So this is round two now. My second batch of wings coming out the oil. So just putting it on our uh, pan here. Hopefully by now you're getting the hang of this. Remember when it comes off, we're just gonna give it a tap. So get any of that excess oil off of there so it doesn't get in our, our tray. Good. It's looking good, y'all. Oh yeah, man, I wish y'all were here to smell this. You can smell it. It's smelling good. Aromatic. I like this color too. And my chicken, I like it to have a nice crisp to it. I want those soggy fried chicken. I want my chicken to have a nice little crisp to it. And that's what we're trying to do here. Not overcrowding the fryer, cooking at a good temperature, and making sure we cook it all the way. And you have a good system to drain that oil off of there so it doesn't make your chicken soggy. I think this is the last one off the second batch. We're gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of this chicken, then we'll show you the finished product once we get back. Chicken wings are still cooking, but it looks like a certain person couldn't wait until they all got done. How is it, No, It's good? It's good? Sucking that bone like it's good, boy. All right, we'll be back. All right, y'all, I think the chicken came out nicely. Um, this is the last batch, and as you can see, it looks real good. I like the color of the chicken. I'll take this piece. You see the crunchiness is there. So y'all give this a try, man. If you haven't fried chicken and a fry daddy, really give it a try. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit that subscribe button and click that bell so anytime we drop a new video, you'll be the first to know. Hit that like button and leave me some comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in any of the products we used in today's video, we'll leave some links down below. Hope you have an awesome day, and thanks for watching.